What's up guys, Aktesh here back with another video. So on my previous video, I expressed my disappointment on the Asus Zephyrus G14's overpricing and that made a lot of people angry and they can be found defending Asus in the comment section on my previous video and hitting the dislike button. But all that's absolutely fine by me. It's not that you'll always have to agree with my decision or my opinion. I mean, I'm just a guy on the internet giving his opinion. But before you hit the dislike button on this video, I would like to tell you something about me and about this channel. So guys, I belong to a lower middle class family and I just completed my BTEC in computer science just a few weeks ago. And now I'm waiting for my offer letter from one of the MNCs that I will be joining in the coming weeks. So guys, people like me who are always on a tight budget should always have a clear set of priorities. We should never make decision based on our emotions. We should never have inclination towards a particular brand. We should always go by facts and figures. And guys, on my channel, you will only get facts and figures. Facts and figures which I have verified multiple times before making a video. And I also give links to back my facts and figures. Guys, on my channel, you will not find only positive talks or you will never find myself justifying both the sides. On this channel, you will only get my opinion from the perspective of a guy who is always on a budget and who is looking to make some compromises on certain aspects that would help gain something that would keep performing for at least four years or more. And guys, for me, the most important aspect is performance. I know a lot of people looking to purchase a high performance gaming laptop and are on a budget. And most of those people are students who are looking to join an engineering college in the coming weeks. So guys, trust me, I know the exact set of configuration that you need to clear your engineering career and satisfy all your entertainment needs as well as your work needs even after completing engineering that's because i have been through this phase i know engineering is expensive there are a lot of compromise that you have to make in order to get your laptop purchase right now so trust me and i also know a lot of guys who prefer build quality or screen quality over performance and that is absolutely fine as i said always stick to your priorities i am just a guy giving my opinion on certain things on the internet and it's not that you always have to agree with me at the end it is always your call all right now that's enough drama on this channel Let's get back to the video. So in this video, I'll give you some information on the GTX 1650 series and also its predecessor, the GTX 1050 series, because it is important to know what the GTX 1650 series is replacing. And I'm going to give you gaming benchmarks on GTX 1650 versus 1650 Ti and the 1660 Ti. And at the end, I'm going to give you my final verdict. So stick around till the end. Don't skip the video as there's a lot of information to get. All right, guys. Let's start with the GTX 1050 series. So I made my laptop purchase, my first gaming laptop purchase back in 2018. That is the Acer Predator Helios 300 with the GTX 1050 Ti and the Intel Core i5-8300H. Back then that laptop used to sell for 90,000 rupees, which was way, way, way overpriced. So trust me when I say this, I waited almost two years for my laptop purchase. That's how patient I am. Why? Let me tell you. So back in those days in 2016-17 when I, jo I joined engineering, this laptop with the Intel Core i5 and 7th generation, with the GTX 1050 Ti used to sell for over uh, 89,000 rupees but I knew that the laptop should be priced at around you know 65 to 55 like 55 to 65,000 rupees so I waited I waited I waited 2016-17 and then in 17-18 uh, the i5 8th generation was launched and still the price was 90,000 rupees I still waited and waited and waited and then finally on October 2018 I purchased this laptop at a price of 60,000 rupees with a discount of over, with a discount of 30,000 rupees so I brought the price as close as the US price so that's how much I waited guys so believe me when I say when I say things back then I got this laptop with a configuration of i5 8th generation which is a very good CPU back in 2018 and uh, a 1050 Ti 8 GB of 2066 memory and uh, 128 GB of SSD and 1 terabyte hard drive guys back then SSDs included with laptops were very expensive so you know how good of a deal it was back then now when I made the purchase of the Predator Helios 300 for 60,000 rupees there were similar laptops from from Asus ROG as well as from Acer themselves featuring the 1050 right so I could save like seven to eight thousand rupees if I purchase the 1050 version instead of the 1050 Ti version but guys trust me I knew that the 1050 Ti was worth buying because back then the 1050 Ti was the best mid-range value for money uh, graphics card so the 1050 Ti was almost 30% on average faster than the 1050 so giving that extra you know 9 to 10,000 rupees for the 1050 Ti was definitely worth buying. Now we fast forward to 2019-20 and you have the 1650 series, right? So you have the 1650, 1650 Ti, the 1650 Super. So let's talk about the desktop. So Nvidia launched the GTX 1650 with the 4 gigabyte of GDDR5 memory. If you don't know what happened to it, it was launched in the desktop market and it absolutely flopped. 
because the market already had the radio on RX 570 and the RX 570 just destroyed the GTX 1650. And then Nvidia was forced to release the GDDR6 version of the GTX 1650. I have no clue why they launched the GDDR5 version. Maybe thought maybe they thought that people will know that it's Nvidia, so they'll buy it anyways. So it just flopped. Then they launched GDDR6 version. Now the GDDR6 version, if you watch hardware unboxed awesome video on the comparison of the GDDR5 versus GDDR6, it was a pointless upgrade. It was only about six percentage more uh, uh, powerful, and uh, the price increased. Now the market again already had the RX 570 with eight gigabytes of VRAM. Uh, back then so once again the RX 570 you know uh, outperformed the GTX 1650 and it flopped then Nvidia was forced to release the GTX 1650 Super that was a really good card and that is still one of the great budget cards that you can purchase so you know these kind of things are going on the desktop market now let's come to the laptop market in the laptop market you will also find the GTX 1650 with the 4 gigabyte of GDDR5 memory and 4 gigabyte of GDDR6 memory and in the laptop market the difference between the two is even smaller you know, you can find the GTX 1650 with the GDDR5 memory for as low as 50,000 rupees, right? And you have the GDDR6 memory with 60,000 rupees. So you have the 1650 GDDR5 for 50,000 rupees. You have the GDDR6 for 60,000 rupees. And then you have the 1650 Ti, which is an upgrade over the 1650. And that sells for around on an average of 75,000 rupees. So that's almost a 15,000 rupees premium over the 1650 GDDR6 version and 25,000 rupees premium over the regular GDDR5 version of the 1650. Is that worth it? So let's check out the benchmarks and you decide for yourself. Starting with Doom Eternal at high settings 1080p, the 1650 Ti is 6 percentage faster than the 1650 and the 1660 Ti is 48% faster than the 1650 Ti. In Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the 1650 Ti is 7% faster than the 1650 and the 1660 Ti is 50% faster than the 1650 Ti. In Red Dead Redemption 2 at high settings, the 1650 Ti is 6% faster than the 1650 and the 1660 Ti is 46% faster than the 1650 Ti. In Ghost Recon Breakpoint, the 1650 Ti and the 1650 is exactly the same and the 1660 Ti is 55% faster than the 1650 Ti. In Control at high settings, the 1650 Ti is 9% faster than the 1650 and the 1660 Ti is 44% faster than the 1650 Ti. In Control at medium settings, the 1650 Ti is 8% faster than the 1650 and the 1660 Ti is 45% faster than the 1650 Ti. In Rage 2 at Ultra setting, the 1650 Ti is 8% faster than the 1650 and the 1660 Ti is 27% faster than the 1650 Ti. In Far Cry New Dawn at Ultra setting, the 1650 Ti is only 2% faster than the 1650 and the 1660 Ti is 50% faster than the 1650 Ti. In Metro Exodus at high settings, the 1650 Ti is 30 percentage faster than the 1650 and the 1660 Ti is 39% faster than the 1650 Ti. In Apex Legends at Ultra settings, the 1650 Ti is 9% faster than the 1650 and the 1660 Ti is 39% faster than the 1650 Ti. In Battlefield 5 at Ultra setting, the 1650 Ti is 12% faster than the 1650 and the 1660 Ti is 39% faster than the 1650 Ti. Lastly, in Fortnite at Ultra setting or Epic setting, the 1650 Ti is 5% faster than the 16 and the 1660 Ti is 47% faster than the 1650 Ti. So you saw the benchmarks. Now you say for yourself, is the 1650 Ti worth it? On average, the 1650 Ti is 7% faster than the 1650 and the 1660 Ti is 43-44% to on average faster than the 1650 Ti. Now guys, I'm gonna make things simple for you. You take my opinion or you don't take it, it's your it's a uh, it's your problem after all it's your money you're gonna make the purchase i'm just a guy giving his opinion if your budget allows like if you have a particular budget and in that budget you get the 1650 ti just go for it there is no problem if you can afford it go for it but if you are on a budget who is looking to purchase a 1650 laptop but thinking whether you should increase your budget to like you know buy 4000 5000 rupees to fit the 1650 ti that's when i would say don't get it guys instead of spending money instead of spending five six thousand rupees on the 650 di you can just you know get another eight gigabytes of gddr4 3200 megahertz ram for your ryzen laptop that would increase your performance a lot you can simply install msi afterburner on your laptop and increase the memory clocks and the boost clock and the core clock of your uh, gdx 650 
that would be enough for you to bridge the gap between 650 and 650 ti that's what it is if you are having the budget and the laptop that you are going to purchase already has 650 ti fine go purchase it but if you're having to if you're thinking about stretching your budget and getting a 650 ti laptop that's when i would say that just don't purchase it instead save the money get yourself some ram or get yourself some sort of storage, some SSD storage. Invest that money into some good engineering courses that you'll find on Coursera, Udacity, Udemy. So that's what my suggestion would be. And if you are looking to purchase a GTX 1650 Ti laptop and you have this budget to, you know, uh, maybe increase the budget by 5,000 rupees and get a 1660 Ti laptop like on the Acer Nitro 7 or on the or the HP Omen 15 with the 1660 Ti, that's when I would say that that extra 5,000 rupees would absolutely be worth it because the 1660 ti is on average 44 percentage better than the 1650 ti now guys i see a lot of people you know commenting on the hp 150 on the dell g5 and stuff like that that those laptops come with 60 hertz display so what's the use of paying 1660 ti prices and uh, rx 5600m it's not just about the refresh rate get this thing correctly that's available with 60 hertz display to lower the price so that you can get yourself a good graphics card so that you can future proof yourself I'm giving an example. If you have a 1650 Ti laptop, okay, that comes with a 144 Hz display, first of all, that would be useless because this laptop cannot push 144 Hz a display. It cannot push like over 100 FPS in most games. All right. And one more thing is that right now, the FPS that you would be getting on the 1650 Ti, that would be like 60 FPS on high settings or maybe like medium to high settings. Okay. But on the 1660 Ti, you will be getting like 80 to 90 to 100 FPS on high settings and medium settings, right? Let's see you keep the laptop for two more years. After two years, your 1650 Ti laptop will be giving like 20 FPS, like 30 FPS on high or ultra setting. Whereas the 1660 Ti will still maintain that 60 FPS average on ultra setting even after two years. You know, two years back, I decided to invest that extra 7000 rupees on the 1050 Ti version of the Helios 300 and that is worth it because even after two years you know at medium settings I can still get 60 FPS medium to high setting I can still get 60 FPS it's the same thing that I'm saying about the 1660 Ti if you are going to purchase 1660 Ti you can increase the budget to get the 1660 Ti so that's the benefit of getting a 1660 Ti over a 1650 Ti right you don't get that 144 display but that's fine it is possible to get 144 hertz using external monitor even after five years you wish to purchase an external monitor to play games or do video reading or play you know esport titles you can get that 144 hertz display afterwards also it is possible but it is never possible to change the graphics card of your laptop you should get that thing an external monitor is a uh, investment you can use that external monitor forever. You can use it with other laptops that you'll be buying after five years or whenever you want to buy. You can use that monitor for serious video editing. You can use that monitor for, you know, for real low, low response time gaming. And it has multiple benefits, but you can never change the graphics card of your laptop. What you buy today is what will stick with you forever. Okay, so that was my two cents. Take it as it is. If you have the budget to fit the 650 Ti, go for it. If you don't have the budget and you can only buy 650 Ti and you're looking to increase your budget, that's not worth it. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you did not like it, hit the dislike button. Comment down below about what you feel about the video, what you feel about my opinion. And yeah, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell icon. All right, that's it for this video, guys. I'm Ditesh and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.